everyone welcome back to the course and uh, this week we have been discussing uh, the different basics of energy economics so we'll continue with the same so we have been discussing the basic concepts of time value of money and what are the different problems that one would encounter in an energy related project one of the major issues for an energy related project would be in the that of cash flows so you would have the capital investment being invested in the first few years then you would have the revenue being generated for the next 15 20 30 40 years and in between you could also have ups and time, uh, downs in terms of the replacement at the end maybe the salvage value or in between the payment of the interest and all these aspects make it uh, uh, to uh, understand difficult to understand like will the plant be profitable on an overall basis or not because you would have uh, the revenues being generated at a very different times at which or uh, from a very different time uh, from which the costs are associated and let us uh, try to understand some things on uh, that particular friend so uh, let us try to understand some more basic concepts uh uh so uh, i'm going to basically uh, uh like uh, take you through the different aspects which could be either the addition of funds or the uh, subtraction of funds so wherever you can see a plus sign which means uh, there is uh, some kinds of funds that are being added uh, to your account and when there is a negative uh, you can see there is a cost being incurred so the uh, the basic uh, uh, place how or the basic way in which the uh, funds will be added to your account will be the revenues this would be the revenues from the selling of the different products services or the capital assets that can happen at different time frames but basically it will be a selling of the energy that you generate then it uh, the revenue could also be generated from the interest that is earned on the basis of if you have given any funds to uh, uh, as loan to some entity there could be some kind of rebates that are given to you uh, in terms like you are a green manufacturing company or the green in energy production company and the government gives you some rebate so that's a value addition further there could be a value addition in terms of the salvage value which is selling of the products after their useful life is over again uh, this is uh, like this could be negative also in some cases as we have discussed in the case of nuclear energy there could be some additional cost at the end of the plant as well then there could be significant tax credits so the governments around the world would want more and more green energy projects to come up and as an incentive to for the different uh, types of uh, uh, corporates or industries to set up a plant the government uh, 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 is like trying to come up with policies where it provides certain kind of tax rebates to the company so that they have uh, an impetus to invest money into these kinds of projects and this is specifically true for countries in the oecd which is the organization of economic cooperation and development but uh, uh, and uh, and these kinds of tax credits is basically given in terms of during the initial few years when the investment is occurring so your overall cash flow is negative so uh, the uh, the government would want to give you some further tax credits to make you help or to help you invest money but to make use of these tax credits you also need to have a few operations that are profitable wherein you could you should be able to utilize the uh, credits that are generated from this particular project so overall it's an incentive that the government would like to provide to encourage the companies to put or uh, invest monies into energy projects for the future if i talk about uh, the different kinds of uh, uh, like uh, places where the funds are detected uh, Uh, the first thing would be the capital expenditures which means putting up the capital equipment which uh, one or which is a significant cost during the initial few years of the operations of the plant or setting of of the plant then there would be other fixed cost like uh, the maintenance cost the equipment cost the salaries the interest the insurance that would have be that should be paid irrespective whether the plant is operating or not then there is a whole lot of variable cost which are um, basically linked to the production capacity of the plant more the production um, more the fuel fuel cost is can be expected and lesser the production less uh, could be the sales or the distribution cost then uh, nonetheless you would also have the taxes uh, the different uh, government would want to tax on the profit that you would generate of course there would be a uh, different countries uh, uh, like would be given different kinds of tax credits or incentives uh, 
so as to help the different kinds of industry being set up and also like uh, the taxes would depend upon the individual tax codes of the different countries so the tax codes are not uniform throughout the world there is a huge variation and there are a lot of uh, integrities that are involved like what is to be taxed and what what rate it is to be taxed and it is um, beyond uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, the scope of the current course to go into this but uh, again there could be different kinds of taxes that would apply and then there could be a closer cost. The closer cost could be again um, be positive or negative. So when it is positive, it will normally be called a salvage value. Else it would be called a closer cost. And uh, it uh, might like a uh, typical example could be a nuclear power plant. And then a few other examples could be like shutting down an oil or gas well, which would also mean uh, the disposal of uh, the non-marketable equipment so if you have taken some equipment to the far off field but uh, no one would want to buy the equipment now so you would have to dispose it off to a safe location that would incur some of the transportation and the dismantling costs so these are some of the costs that you would incur again so let us try to understand how this uh, cost uh, would uh, um, be affected in a plant of uh, in the life of a plant through the help of a simple example so let us uh, uh, see uh, uh, consider the construction of a simple pv power plant where the operator is planning to invest around 4 crore rupees in the first year and 8 crore rupees in the second year so that brings the total plant cost to be around 12 crores and the plant uh, is expected to be completed by the end of two years uh, after two years or uh, like or the onset of the third year it is expected that it will generate some revenue and that revenue uh, and that including the different incentives that you will be getting is expected to be around 1 crore 60 lakhs per year and this is expected to increase at, uh, at a rate of 7% annually which means every year there is going to be a 7% increment. So one can expect that you are charging or you are increasing and the charge from the consumers. So today if you are selling the electricity for rupees, 4 rupees, I would uh, increase that by 7% and sell it uh, at, at a slightly higher price next year. Further, there would be an increase in the operational expenses as well. So this is also expected like every year you would want uh, the salaries of your uh, like uh, people or uh, the em uh, employees to be rising and also there could be an inflation which affects uh, the rise of uh, the price rise of certain equipments or as well as the raw materials. So it has been assumed that uh, the operational expenses are almost 40 lakhs per year and they rise at the level of 5% annually. Further, at the end of the project, there would be some material that would be left and there it is expected that it could be sold for some kind of recovery and it has been uh, like approximated that around 2 crores 40 lakhs is something that you can fetch um, by selling of dual plants like which could have metals or there could be some uh, uh, silica that might be recoverable from uh, the, uh, uh, the PV power plant. If these are the types of cash flows, uh, like how are the total net cash flows for the project going to look like? So we'll, we'll try to uh, do this calculation with the help of MS Excel, which I believe is a common tool uh, to which most of you would have access to or you could use a similar spreadsheet type of software to do this calculation. So uh, let me know, uh, now try to go to MS Excel and try to share like how this kind of calculation would appear. So this is a typical Excel that I have already prepared to start with uh, for the convenience of all of us. So uh, as have been told in the question that uh, in the first year uh, there is going to be uh, an, a, like an expense of 4 crores and this would be followed by an expense of 8 crores in the second year and in these two years it's basically the construction of plant that is happening which means there would not be an annual uh, revenue or expenses or salvage value that would be happening. The revenue starts from the year 3 which would be around 1 crore 60 lakhs and the expenses would be almost 40 lakhs per year. Also we have thought that or uh, we have emphasized that the uh, revenue would be increasing at the rate of 7% per year. So what I'll do is like I'll just mark uh, uh, an increase of 7% from the previous year and scroll it down until the useful life of the plant which is 10 years from the beginning of the plant. 
So third year happens to be the first year and it is going till the 12th year which makes it a total of 10 years and every year uh, the uh, revenue is uh, expected to increase at a rate of 7% and we can also see in the span of 20 uh, sorry the 10 years uh, the revenue has almost doubled it started from around 1 crore 60 lakhs and it uh, has now reached around 2 crores 94 lakhs. So at the same time, we can also expect the uh, expenses to rise and the expense rise I have taken uh, to be rising at a slightly slower rate. So it starts with 40 lakhs and increase at the rate of 5% uh, from the previous year. And if I scroll this down, uh, the expenses uh, might increase up till 62 lakhs at the end of uh, 12 years. Uh, also at the 12th year or the end of the 12th year we would have a salvage value that would be taking place. So this is how uh, the cash flow would take place and the total cash flow would be an addition of these four aspects which is the investment plus the revenue uh, plus the expenses and the salvage value. So if I scroll this down and this is how um, uh, my expenses would like, look like. There would be negative in the first two years and they would be positive in the next few years and would be continuously increasing. I can also try to analyze uh, these kinds of expenses with the help of a simple bar graph. So let me try to make a simple bar graph in here. Yeah, so what you can see here uh, are the expenses in terms of a simple bar graph. So what you see on the x-axis is the year. So you would have the negative expenses happening in the first two years, 4 crores and 8 crores respectively. And for the future, you would have a net income that is being generated. So that is steadily rising and there is an increase in the last year and that is basically attributed to the selling of the remaining material that you have as salvage value. So you can see there is a there's a drastic increase. So if I add the whole thing, all the net flows, and do a sum, it might come to be positive, and you might say that the plant is profitable as a whole. But there is a catch here: we have not taken into account the time value of money. Is the revenue or the total cash flow? that we have taken at the end of the plan that is 4 crore 72 lakhs is that greater than a cash flow of around 1 crore 20 lakhs at the third year this is something we cannot say as of now it might happen to be greater it might happen to be lesser because as we move in the future we would have an depreciation in the value of money as we have discussed in the time value of money. So something that is uh, like if I have 100 rupees uh, today in my pocket, this is worth more than 100 rupees at the end of the year or after two years. So this is something that also needs to be taken into account and that makes the whole thing very interesting. So let us now continue with this types of analysis and uh, let us try to understand more on this particular aspect. Another thing uh, that we would want to learn um, in the future uh, or uh, like uh, another thing that we would want to learn is many times it happens that the income that is generated uh, throughout the life of a plant stays constant. The only thing that changes is the year of that income and in that in such a case uh, the income could be estimated or the time value of money could be applied to it with the help of an annuity. So suppose I have um, uh, like an income generating say A at years 0 and this A at the end of year 1 then another A at the end of year 2. If I have to take the, uh, take the present value this would be A this is uh, the income at the present year then for the second year it would be divided by 1 plus R 1 plus R square and this goes on till the year n and it could be 1 plus r raised to power n. So uh, it looks very similar to, or it is exactly a, a geometric series in action and we can estimate uh, the sum of uh, this geometric series by the simple formula. So the present value of an annuity or such kind of expenses are called an annuity what can be calculated with the help of a simple calculation 
I am just taking the first term outside and then this would be 1 plus r raised to power n plus 1 because there are n plus 1 terms in total. I divide that with plus r minus 1. Uh, you do a few arrangements, I would want you to do that and finally what you would come up with the value is uh, the annuity which is the exactly same expense that you are making into 1 plus r n plus 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus r raised to power n into r where a is the exactly uh, say, uh, same payment or like if you are dividing a principal into the same payment throughout the life of uh, uh, maybe n years and r is the interest rate that have been put into action. So what I am exactly trying to say here is if I have same payments being received at uh, different years and if I would want to say an equivalent of those payments I can have a payment like this and this is the formula that could be utilized. Uh, the inverse of this formula could also be utilized for calculating of the EMIs. So many of you might have an experience of taking a product from the market and you would want to pay uh, back the principal amount along with the interest in the form of equally monthly installments and you could do a similar thing and you can just reverse the formula in which your monthly installment or the yearly installment if I say M would be nothing but the R into the principal amount 1 plus R raised to power N where N is the length total length of the time span and 1 plus R raised to power n plus 1 minus 1. So this is exactly and the same formula I am just rearranging the terms and this is a similar calculation in which you are just uh, uh, paying back the monthly installments uh, in for a principal amount that you would have taken. So uh, let us again try to understand this with the help of a simple example. Suppose uh, I am talking about a, a young professional like uh, some of you who would want to uh, buy her, uh, her first flat and the cost of the uh, flat would be around 23 lakhs 50,000 rupees. Uh, um, like uh, the person already has uh, some uh, money at her disposal and she would want to put a 10% down payment that would come around 2 lakh 35,000 and plans uh, to borrow the remaining 21 lakhs 15,000. Now and there are two options that are given to her. Either she can go for a 30 year loan at an annual rate of 6% or a 15 years loan at, uh, at a slightly lesser uh, interest rate. So uh, what uh, you would have to calculate is how much would be the monthly payment for each of the options and what is the total or, uh, interest that she would have to pay for each option. So we will be using the formula we just derived for uh, the EMIs and try to come up with the answers. So let us uh, try to do that together. Uh, let us try to evaluate these both options which is like 30 years loan at the rate of 6% and 15 years lo uh, loan at the rate of 5.4%. So intuitively like it is very difficult to say which is going to be better or not. So we would have to do this calculation. Uh, so if I go uh, with a 6% loan. So in that case, uh, the R would be 6% and divide that with 12 because uh, it will be compounded on a monthly basis that is where the monthly installments are going in and the, the final interest rate would uh, turn out to be around 0.5% per a month and at the same time, the time period N would be 30 which is the 30 years into 12. And finally, this would be 360 months. If I put uh, all of these values in the formula and that uh, we did, okay, uh, we just uh, calculated, which comes out as so the formula, let me repeat it again for you. It's the EMIM is equal to the rate of interest into the principal 1 plus R raised to power n again 1 plus r raised to power n plus 1 minus 1. If I plug in all the values into this formula, 
uh, and the interest rate or the, uh, the total value or the installment for the monthly installment M and that I would have to pay would be roughly around uh, rupees 12,605. So let me compare this value with uh, the type of EMI that we'll be paying for the second case. So in the second case, I have an interest rate of 5.4% and a duration of around 15 years. So in this case, this would be 5.4% divided by 12 and the interest rate would come out to be 0.45%. And the number of installments would be uh, 15 years into 12 and this would be roughly 180 installments and if I put these values in the above formula in which I am taking a loan of around 21 lakh uh, 15 thousand rupees uh, the value of M or the EMI would come around to be 17 thousand uh, 31 rupees. Uh, so it appears that and there is an increase in the amount of uh, uh, the total amount of the EMI that are we paying but is it worth it to pay 12,000 for 30 years or 17,000 for 15 years. Some of you might have guessed it right but uh, for the benefit of others let us uh, do a total calculation. Uh, so if I multiply 12,603 into 360 which is the total number of installments that, that would be going it would come around to be around 45 uh, lakhs 37,800 rupees. So this will be the total amount that I'll be paying back. So and just remember that I had initially taken a loan of 21 lakhs 15,000. So this is the case one and if I see the case two which was uh, in which the EMI was around 17,000 so I will put that value uh, so the value was around 17,031 into 180 and the total value for this particular amount would be roughly 30 lakh 65,000 uh, 580 rupees. So you can see there is a drastic difference between the amount, total amount that you will be paying back for the two kinds of loan that you will be taking. Although the interest rate appears to be very similar, there is a change in the lifespan of the project. And you can see, uh, if you see the present value of all the uh, value that you will be paying back, there is a drastic difference. So this is uh, a major reason why we need to understand the time value of money and, and the time for which I have taken uh, the loan or I have given something for credit and uh, again uh, like what is the rate at which uh, uh, the interest is being charged because that can have a drastic effect on the total amount that you are uh, generating or paying back. And again, I would like to reiterate that in this case, the loan that was taken was, had an initial amount of 21 lakh 15,000 rupees or so. And uh, based upon the type of loan that uh, you would take, uh, you might end up either paying 30 lakh 65,000 or 45 lakh 37,000. So let us uh, proceed with this and um, by this point of time you, you might be also be interested like, like how would one come up with this rate of interest or the discount rate are this interrelated or how would uh, like this interest be chosen at all. So uh, for understanding like interest rate is something that is basically chosen by the different government entities and discount rate is basically something that is charged over the interest rate. And this discount rate that uh, normally the corporations would be using for their different evaluations uh, like uh, would be something that uh, would be related to the type of corporation um, uh, it is like uh, normally if uh, if I'm talking about a non-profit organization or a public sector organization they would have a, a lesser discount rate uh, whereas a corporate would want to have a, a greater discount rate then what is the inherent risk of the project 
as the saying is like uh, the, uh, the higher the risk higher the uh, like higher the payment so if the if people are investing in a higher uh, risk uh, uh, like project they would also want it to have a higher discount rate they would want to recover the money back as soon as possible then it also depends upon how the overall economy or the world economy is behaving is the uh, is the capital available easily or and there is a dearth of capital in the market further if there is a high inflation this also is linked to a high amount uh, like high percentage of the discount rate if the inflation is smaller so it affects uh, uh, the discount rate in a similar way and further another major uh, aspect and that affects the discount rate is the length of the project again as i have reiterated earlier like the higher the length of the project more is the risk involved and higher would be the discount rate charged because uh, no one knows how the policies are going to look like maybe 15 years 20 years down the line if there is a war like the project stop stops what happens uh, take the example uh, uh, or of the case of germany like there was the fukushima disaster in japan and all of a sudden the country decides to um, uh, to close most of its nuclear power plants uh, so the all the investment that had been going into the nuclear power plant uh, um, becomes a difficult thing to recover and uh, people who are investing in the energy field would want to uh, like take such uh, such invest uh, investment with a lot of caution and again the interest rate to which uh, this discount rate is normally tied could uh, could be coming from the different sources it could either be uh, the interbank discount rate uh, like or the rate that which the banks charge one another it could be the short term interest rate uh, based on the government securities or the government bonds this could uh, like as example could be the 10 year treasury bonds in the case of the us it could also be linked to the long term interest rate of the government for 20 years or 30 years treasury bonds so these are some of the examples to which companies would want to link their discount rates and each corporate would have its own discount rate further this could also be uh, the interest rate that is charged by the different financial institutions as banks to for the different la uh, loans it gives it could also be the cost of the borrowed capital uh, like uh, to give an example there are different rating agencies uh, like the standards and poors uh, or the moody's which would want to rate the companies or the corporates on a different uh, grading and there is capital that is given to these companies on a different uh, interest rate further uh, companies could have their own discount rates which is based up which could be based upon like what is the percentage of return they would want to give to its shareholder so that is again dependent upon a company policy and uh, many of the corporates or the management teams of the corporates also have a minimum acceptable rate of return like this is the minimum rate they would want to gain for their projects and the discount rate for uh, its uh, like building of the projects is linked to that particular rate of return again the first few that we have discovered uh, uh, that we have discussed are uh, uh, like are known to us like they are normally given uh, uh, like uh, uh, like they are available uh, uh uh like if we find them but if we talk about these two rates of returns this is something that is specific to the organization and it's uh, specific to the management team and might not be available uh to the public so in uh, in today's particular class we have tried to understand how the cash flows look like for a typical uh, project and why the time value of money is important to be accounted for Uh, in the following classes, we'll try to focus on the decision-making process and what are the different types of matrices that would be used to ascertain whether a project uh, a project is profitable or not. With this, we end today's class. Thank you.